Okay. Good day, everyone. We are now going uh, recording the segment two, part one of compensation administration. This is your host, Attorney Linda Name Saren, and welcome back. So. Last time we stopped with the 13 main factors to consider in compensation administration. And one of them is uh, gender inequality or the difference in the salaries of men and women. So before we continue our discussion, allow me to show you a video clip from YouTube. When we talk about gender equality in the United States, there's this one statistic you see all the time. Women earn 79 cents for every dollar men make. And while that statistic is factually correct, there's a lot it doesn't tell you. It simply compares the median wages of men and women who work full time. It doesn't tell you how the wage gap plays out for women with different educational levels or different ages or work in different fields. And you need that information if you want to start closing the wage gap. Part of the wage gap reflects the fact that women are concentrated in lower paying occupations. But to fully understand the issue, you have to look within occupations too. Back in 2009, three economists set out to understand the wage gap by following a group of MBA graduates from the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. They looked at thousands of men and women who graduated between 1990 and 2006. And their data showed that men had slightly higher salaries right out of the gate. One year out of business school, women were making an average salary of $115,000, while men earned $130,000. But nine years out of business school, things looked really different. Men were earning an average salary of $400,000, while women were earning 60% less, $250,000 on average. The gap had widened considerably. But research suggests the gap doesn't stay that wide, that it shrinks as women enter middle age. This chart shows how the wage gap for college graduates changes as women age. The lower the line, the bigger the wage gap between men and women. If you look at women born in 1973, you can see the wage gap growing as they go from their mid-20s to their mid-30s. Better than previous generations, but heading in the same direction. Same thing for women born in 1968. The pay difference between men and women continues to grow as they move from their mid-30s to their mid-40s. And for women born in 1948, things started off the same. The gap widens as they get older. But then, all of a sudden, it starts shrinking. As women approach their 50s and 60s, the difference between men's and women's salaries actually gets smaller and smaller, which makes sense if you think about what often happens during a woman's 20s and 30s. In the Chicago MBA study, women with kids had a wage gap twice as large as women without. The truth is that women still take on a disproportionate share of child-rearing tasks. A survey from Pew found that in two-parent households, Women did more than men when it came to managing kids' schedules, taking care of them when they're sick, and handling the majority of household chores. And that was a survey where both parents worked full time. But these additional responsibilities, they seem to hurt some women more than others. This is a really key research finding from Claudia Golden, an economist at Harvard, who is a leading researcher on the gender wage gap. She shows this by exploring how gender pay gaps vary in different fields. And this is one of her charts. Each of the dots is a different higher paying job. The lower the dot, the larger the gender pay gap. And the further to the right, the more the job pays based on the average income of men in that job. These green dots represent jobs in the tech sector. And for the most part, the jobs are pretty close to the zero line, meaning the difference in pay for men and women is really small. The same is true for jobs in science, the yellow dots. But look at these red dots. They represent jobs in business and they're mostly clustered towards the middle and the bottom of the chart, meaning they have some of the largest wage gaps. And there's a fairly simple way to explain some of these differences. Some jobs require really specific hours and others are more flexible. Take your prototypical businesswoman. Maybe she's a venture capitalist, maybe she's an accountant. Either way, she has a pretty standard nine to five schedule so she can meet with other business people or with clients. And if she's not available to her clients when they need her, her bosses won't think she's doing a good job. Now, compare that to a scientist who works in a lab. Most of her work is self-directed, and it doesn't really matter when she runs her experiments, as long as she gets them done. 
If she gets her work done, her bosses think she's doing a good job. For the millions of women in jobs that demand very specific hours, the wage gap is larger than it is for women in jobs with more flexible hours. And there's one job where we can see this really clearly. In the 1970s, women pharmacists earned about 66% of what men did. Pharmacies used to be mostly independent businesses where a single pharmacist might be responsible for keeping a shop open whenever people needed it. Today, most pharmacies are owned by large chains and they stay open longer, which means they need more pharmacists. Women pharmacists now have a lot more options and a 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift is just as good as a nine to five shift. Nobody really gets rewarded for working exceptionally long hours. And the wage gap for pharmacists has shrunk dramatically. Today, female pharmacists make 92% of what their male counterparts do. Of course, we can't all be pharmacists. There will always be jobs where it's important to work particular hours. But there are also lots of jobs where hours could potentially become more flexible than they are right now. And the research tells us that the more we can make that work, the more the wage gap is going to shrink. So that's the story about wage gap. And uh, in the Philippines, it's not much to talk about because most of the most of the uh, executives here in the Philippines who are women are receiving almost the same pay or exactly the same pay as their male counterparts. And uh, of course, executives of uh, the age of executives are higher compared to um, newly hired personnel. So a woman or a man could be a woman or a man could be an executive once he or she reaches the age of 35 averagely or 30 or 30. Yeah. So in the Philippines, it's not really um, so obvious no? about the wage gap. And we have not made any studies about it. Unlike in the US, it's very uh, existing, existent, and they're very vocal about it because most women are receiving lesser pay than men. But if you uh, notice in the Philippines, if you talk about certain positions, particularly in our school, there are women holding very uh, high positions in CITU. Like for instance, the, the vice president for academic affairs, you know, which is now being held by attorney Corazon Valencia. She's, very, she's earning a very high pay. And previously it was held by a man, but that man was receiving lesser pay than what she's receiving right now. But I guess it's, it depends on the time because she has been holding that for several years now. And I, mean, I think the um, inflation rate probably has made her ha uh, salary more high compared to the previous BP admin. So again, it's not so obvious here in the Philippines and uh, because women and men are receiving the same pay here in the Philippines. And uh, there are laws which protect, protect women here in the Philippines. There's the Magna Carta for Women, uh, that's a law which uh, requires employers to give out the same pay to men and women who are working the same kind of work. Okay, so we go back to our uh, segment two. And the next topic is the considerations in compensation administration. So what are the considerations to deal with. First, the wage policies should be carefully developed, having in mind the interest of the following. First, 
letter A in the management, because these are the uh, management is the one who is represent the representative of the owners. In uh, small businesses, the, the owners themselves are the managers. But in bigger companies, the management belongs to uh, top-notch executives. No? Then we have the employers. So to develop wage policies, you have not only the employees, you have to think about the, the what does they call this? You have to think about the employee's welfare, okay? Then number three, or letter C, the consumers, and of course, the community. Now, why do we have to think about the consumers? Because if you have a higher pay grade to your employees, now significantly that would affect the prices of your product. So the higher you pay, or the higher your cost would be. And the higher the cost would be, so the higher margin you would require for your products in, in order to pay your employees. So it affects your clients or your customers, as well as the community. Because the community also has, uh, you have to put in concern about the competition. Yeah that your company is facing. A number two, consideration in making wage policies would, should be clearly expressed in writing to ensure uniformity and stability. So any uh, thoughts about uniformity and stability should be in writing. Number three, the wage policies should duly incorporate the differences in the jobs. So if there are different kinds of jobs, so it should be, uh, it should be defined in the wage policies. So if there is, um, let's say for example, uh, to exaggerate things, no? Let's say, for example, the job grade one belongs to that of a messenger, and job grade three belongs to the office clerk. So there should be a difference between the two positions because clearly the messenger work does not entail mental or uh, intellectual work, intellectual uh, functions. No? You just send, you're just required, a messenger is just required to deliver messages. So to continue, there must exist a definite plan in which differences in pay for jobs are, pay, are based upon variations in job requirements. So this uh, obviously points out that the differences in pay for jobs must be based on the job requirements so in every job position that you may put in your table of organization oh well, you have to put table organization and these are the jobs so in your specific jobs there must be uh the job requirements so office clerk must be a college graduate messenger could be a high school graduate yeah okay Number four, the wage policies should carefully distinguish between jobs and employees. Jobs should be filled up by persons possessing qualities as demanded by the jobs. So it must be, the wage policy must be, uh, must carefully distinguish between jobs and the employees. So as I've said, the job should be filled with the persons who possess this, the qualities demanded by the jobs. So again, as an example, in office clerk, it requires that it must, she or he must have a college degree in um, office or 
uh, OA, what's that course? Office administration. Yeah. So we go to number five, wage policies should always aim at establishing equal pay for equal work. In other words, wage rate should not be biased for employees filling up the job. So this is the policy in the labor code that equal pay for equal work. This was um, discussed by the Supreme Court in the case that I have told you about the teacher who was from the US, who was uh, hired here in an international school here in Cebu. And then also there are Filipina teachers, no? Cebuano teachers doing the same kind of work, okay? Now, the Filipina or the Zibuana teachers filed a case against the school administration for give why this American teacher is receiving higher pay when they are, uh, in fact, doing the same kind of work. So the Supreme Court told or uh, ruled that the American and the Cebuana teachers, while doing the same kind of work, must have, must receive the same kind of pay. So this is what is being uh, pointed out here in number five. So in other words, wage rates should not be biased for employees filling up the job. So there should not be prejudiced there should not be a biased even if the person who is occupying that position is an american or regardless of her citizenship her race or status in life number six wage policies should make a proper arrangement for receiving, analyzing, and adjusting complaints of workers re regarding wage inequities. Now, if there are discrepancies in your wage policy, because you'll be formulating your wage policy, you, know, you are the one handling this. You plan this. So in the future, there would be complaints if you are not making your wage policies uh, properly huh? because uh let's say for example again job grade one messenger job grade three office clerk but they're just receiving the same kind of pay so why is that so you expect complaints no in the future so be sure to address this kind of uh, complaints Number seven, management should see to it that the employees know and understand the wage policies. So after making your wage policies, being the ad compensation administrator, you're supposed to know, are you supposed to inform your management as well as your employees? And you let them understand why your wage policies is like it like this, like that. Number eight, all wage decisions should be checked against the carefully formulated policies, okay? Now, sometimes the manager or the, the, uh, your boss or your, uh, the HR or human resource department would, uh, would uh, promote a person, no? not by his position, but promote his job grade for certain uh, performance no? for her, for his uh, good deeds, good decisions that he has contributed to the company. So as a reward, uh, this person might be getting a an increase in his salary so let's say he is a manager and 
there's another manager, the same kind of board, with uh, the same kind, almost the same kind of uh, size in the department. So these two managers are receiving the same salary, but the other manager has been doing well in terms of the decision making, and he has contributed to the profit making of the business. You know? So as a reward, the management has granted him a an increase in salary. So there is now a discrepancy in between the two managers' uh, salary grade or salary pay. The same job grade, but their pay are not the same. So that is why you have to make a policy about this. That is what is being pointed out in number eight. So if there is a wage decision, which is uh, increasing the pay of one person, it should be uh, checked against the carefully formulated policies that you have been making. So number nine, uh, the wage policies should be evaluated from time to time to make certain that they are adequate for current needs. Again, as the time unfolds or it goes, the, the pay would seem to be uh, not enough due to the increases in the prices of commodities. So you have to evaluate them from time to time. Okay, number 10, departmental performance should be checked periodically against the standards set in advance. So this is uh, the performance of every department of the company or the corporation. So from time to time, you have to check them against what is being the standards, which is uh, being set no? of your wage policies. Number 11, performance ratings of employees should be done periodically to determine performance linked pay. So this is now the issue of uh, employee who is performing better and employee who is not. So if the employee is doing good, then he his performance rating is higher than the other per, uh, employee. So this, the higher your performance rating would be, there's a, there's a possibility that you will get a an increase in your salary pay. Yeah? So you have to make a policy on this too. Like say, for office job grade, job grade three, the space scale would be um it's just for an example 10000 pesos and it goes to 10 uh, 13000 pesos no? and so there's a, a range so if if for and you have to put uh, office clerk 1 office clerk 2 office clerk 3 like that so if uh an office clerk has been doing well, then she gets a higher pay, or she'll be promoted to office clerk two. And office clerk two obviously has a higher rate than of office clerk one. So that would address this kind of um, this kind of of the problem that would be. Uh, would exist in the future about performance rating. Okay. So again, your job is to make wage policies and your wage policies would be, uh, would be, uh, of course, dependent on your table of organization. Okay. So to ensure it's effective implementation, meaning your wage policies or your compensation um, 
administration, the organization must follow these principles to acquire these principles. Number one, job evaluation must be done scientifically. So this is about number 11, the performance rating. Or no, the, the, the job. <clears throat> so the job evaluation must be done scientifically. So meaning if you have one job in your table of organization, and we will discuss table of organization later. So if you have one specific job in your TO or your table of organization, let's say, for example, well, let's go to the school. You know, we have a dean, you know, a dean in the College of Management and Business Administration. So what are the functions of this dean? So you have to scientifically evaluate and know its job functions. So what are being required? What is the qualification? Or what are the qualifications in order to be a dean? So you have to do it scientifically. Number two, their plans must match the organizational goals and objectives. Because we have the vision, mission. What are the goals of the departments? So every department has its own vision and mission. And number three, the plans and policies must be sufficiently flexible. Okay. Number four, the plans and policies should simplify and expedite other administration processes. So plans and policies, these are made, being made by the higher or top management. So Meaning to say, if you are a compensation administration or your compensation manager, you belong already to the top management level. So definite plans should be there for wage differentials, depending upon skill, education, experience, responsibilities, and work conditions. So again, if there is a function in the TO or a position in the TO, then uh, the difference in the wage or the salary must be dependent upon the skill, the educational attainment or requirement, the experience required, the responsibilities of the work, and the conditions of work. You know? So these are the factors that you have to consider in determining the difference in pay. Number six, there should be adequate measures for recognizing an individual's ability and contributions. So you have to establish measures in order to recognize the individual's ability and what he is contributing to the company. Number seven, correct and prompt payments should always be insured. Of course, salaries are mandated by law to be given. So if you are receiving a monthly salary, salary it should be 15 days and 15 days thereafter. So if the, if the company is paying their employees every fifth day of the month, then you have to count 15 days and that would be the next pay would be on the 20th, falling on the 20th, 20th day of the month. Yeah? And some companies would give 15 on the 15th day and 30th day of the month. Yeah? It depends on the policy. And delay in payment of, of uh, salary is not it's punishable by law. No? You cannot delay payment of salaries. Number eight, for the revision of wage or salary structure, a wage committee should always be preferred. So in order to help implement your wage or your wage policies, then you have to have a wage committee. Number nine, the wage structure must conform to the existing legislations. So what you have to 
bear in mind here is the minimum wage. So if you have minimum wage of 404 pesos, the last time I said it's 406, but it's 404. So for Cebu City, the wage is 404. Let's say, for example, your messenger is receiving 404 pesos, and this is the lowest base. This is the messenger here. So if this is the office clerk here, so it should be higher than 404. No? So let's say office clerk is receiving uh, 500 pesos. And now the list, there is a call for increase in minimum wage. And once the minimum wage is increased by law, let's say, for instance, the minimum wage goes to 460. So the messenger automatically gets a wage or a salary of 460 or 60. So his salary would be here. What about the salary of the office clerk? Almost the same, you know, 500 pesos. Or the, the gap is closing. So what should you do? So if every time there is a minimum wage increase, all job grades should also have a the same kind of increase. So if the if the what's the messenger is the messenger is receiving four hundred four pesos and there's an increase of fifty pesos. Or 60 pesos so 464 now is his minimum wage so the office clerk automatically also gets a 60 pesos increase so from 500 pesos the office clerk will now receive 560 pesos you know to all of the and and so on and so forth so all of the all of those uh, jobs or positions which are receiving higher salary then the messenger will also get their corresponding increase because the minimum wage has been increased but this has not been practiced that's why there are discrepancies in the wage policy or the wage structure because once the minimum wage has been increased all the other wages are not being increased by the company so number 10 all factors influencing compensation in the region should be given proper weightage. Okay. So what is your role as an HR or human resource manager in compensation administration? So the human resource manager plays an important role in developing the policies for compensation administration. The task is entrusted to wage and salary committee composed of line and staff executives from different departments. However, the coordinator or of the committee is the human resource manager, as he has full details of job classifications, job analysis, and job evaluation. So the core uh, in compensation administration is the human resource manager. And there would be wage and salary committee coming from the different departments. Of course, the different departments, these are staff no? or line managers. So you will be dealing with uh, or meeting with different department managers or different staffs from depart different departments. Then from there, you make the company wage policies. So human resource manager or any other executives with compensation administration. So to, up, so to approve the systems of job analysis and job evaluation. So this is the function of HR manager or any other executives who is also with uh, compensation administration. So your role is to approve the systems of job analysis and job evaluation. And another function would be to check all activities of the salary administration group against the company policies. 
The number three, to recommend to top management the wage policies for the administration of the wage program. Then you are also, uh, your role is to recommend changes in wage policy and in the salary of or wage level. Then you have to review department-wise compensation schemes. Then number six, to recommend to the top management specific raises for executives above a specified limit. See, your role as an HR manager is so uh, important and significant. Because the salaries of executives depend on your decision. So what are the challenges of compensation administration program? So let's read this. Pressure is constantly exerted on the compensation committee for pay increases by executives, supervisors, and employees. So there's always a pressure coming from an executive, supervisors, and employees. Hey, let us give us an increase in pay. So if the committee, which you are part of as an HR manager or compensation administration, would yield to such pressure, it would serve to boost the wage expenditure of the company above the funds available for payroll. So meaning if you will you would uh, yield or you would agree, okay, we will give you increase. So what will happen now? It will not be uh, your budgeted amount for payroll would not suffice no? because you're giving increases in pay. So what you have budget, let's say you have budget uh, budgeted one, 100,000 pesos per month as a salary or a department uh, pay or wage, now you would need a 150,000 pesos. So where will you get 50,000 pesos? Now, it may also result in glare, glaring injustice because the rewards that belong properly to the efficient workers would be granted instead to those who press the hardest so this should not be no if somebody calls for an increase it should be by way of performance no? so it depends on the performance of the employees if the employees are working better so they give out a good performance rating so once he gets performance rating for three consecutive times then that employee deserves a pay increase Another challenge would be the aggressive department head may possess in an unusual degree the commendable loyalty to his people that prompts him to take a belligerent stand with reference to salary increases. Because of human element, compensation committee or administrator yields more often to the department head who is aggressive. So sometimes there are uh, department heads who are aggressive and they would in order to get loyalty from their personnel or for their from their subordinates and who the subordinates who are asking for higher pay they would that manager would okay i will ask the compensation administration for increase for you guys okay. And then number three, such pressure should be restrained to some extent where a department budget system is used. Okay, that's what I told you. If there is a budget, then you cannot ask for increase. Now we have, because you will say, we have budgeted this amount already. And if you ask for increase, then we will go beyond the budget amount, no? what has been budgeted. So on this basis, if a given department exceeds the budget allowed to it, the departmental head may be asked to explain the reasons for this. Okay. So at the end of the year or at the end of the month, uh, variance, in, variance in the 
actual cost against the budgeted amount shall be explained by the responsible head or the dis department head of that or the head of that department no so if he increases his pay or increases his workers pay then he has to be ready to explain the budget variance okay so we are still in challenges the broad viewpoint of the compensation committee is seldom shared by the individual department head whose activities are confined to compare the situation within his department with that existing in other departments therefore he is inclined to have a biased view that this department is the most important department in the organization so in order to address this then you have to formulate budgets no? in which the department head is the one uh, you are putting him in charge of the budget so if he he the department head would uh, ask for increase in the pay of his workers then he has to face his budget variance budget variance is the difference between the actual uh actual cost or actual money that you spend for pay and the budget so if you budget only 100,000 100, pesos then your actual uh, salary would be for your men we're talking about department here so if your actual salary is 150,000 there's a 50,000 variance or discrepancy okay more on challenges this pride in his own department might lead him to seek higher monetary rewards for his subordinates than they deserve so again this pertains to the department head no? then sound practice in compensation administration calls for raising wages which are too low as well as curtailing those which are too high effective wages and salary administration recognize the need for a direct tie-up between performance and reward and to do economic justice to all employees in many organizations there are serious inconsistencies in the wage scales of different employees these inequities may be removed through systematic job evaluation which is essential to any wage administration program so um yes if you are hired as a new manager or department head or uh, a human resource manager who is in charge of compensation administration now there may already exist compensation or wage policies now so there's already an existing and you found out that there are discrepancies in the wage policies discrepancies meaning there are uh, people receiving higher pay with but they are holding lower grade positions okay so they are receiving higher pay but their job grade is lower supposed to be lower so those these are serious inconsistencies in the wage scales <coughs> so it could be removed through systematic job evaluation so you have to make systematic job evaluation and give out sound wage at program so you have to rebump everything okay this is the last slide compensation administration must give attention to the individual pay rates and the pay range when number one increase of workload makes it necessary to create a new job in the department okay to the department there's increase in workload and you might need additional workers so that you have to make uh properly you know because you're putting new positions you're putting new personnel and these new positions might fall under might create job or work pay inconsistencies 
Number two, it is proposed to change the minimum or maximum rates, so minimum wage or maximum rates for a job in order to maintain a proper balance. So that's what I uh, discussed a while ago about the office clerk. So the office clerk might range from uh, 10,000 to 13,000 pesos. So this is the minimum and that's the maximum. 10,000 is the minimum and 13,000 is the maximum. So in between, you can play. You know? If the office clerk is uh, new, so she gets the minimum. And as long and as she does the work well, she gets a uh, good performance rating. So she, her salary grade would be, or her salary pay would increase, you know? but not exceeding the maximum of 13,000. Number three, it is proposed to change the rate of pay of an individual individual employee as a result of his demonstrated efficiency or inefficiency. So if there is ever a change in the rate of pay, so it is based on his uh, efficiency or effectiveness or inefficiency. So if he is inefficient, naturally, his salary pay would be decreased. No? So fourth, it is proposed to transfer an employee to the same job, but in another department. So if you are transferring an employee to the same job, but to a different department, he must, he must receive the same kind of pay no? because it's the same job. Number five, it is proposed to promote an employee to another job in the same or another department. So if your individual pay rates does not assure this, you know, let's say you are promoting an employee to another department, but the pay is still the same. So what's the use? No? So the employee would not be motivated to transfer are you getting this let's say for example okay we we'll stick to the office clerk the office clerk is office clerk one no it's, she's receiving ten thousand pesos now you now he's been uh, she's been promoted to office clerk three but to another department And office clerk three in other department is uh, she'll be getting the same pay ten thousand pesos. So what's the use of transferring or promoting her to another uh, higher grade <clears throat> or higher salary because office clerk three is higher than office clerk one, so, and yet receiving the same kind of pay. So. You have to pay attention to this um, pay rates. No? So the pay range would be, there should be a difference when it comes to promoting. Okay. So, <clears throat> and that would be the end of our discussion. So at the end of this uh, chapter, we'll have another quiz. So you study because knowledge is power this is your host saying stay safe always and keep on reading <laughs>